Welcome back, everyone, to the Beginner to Master Speedrun, episode number 21. Currently on a 70-game win streak, and coming into today, rated 11.58. So we'll try and keep it going. Uh, let's hop into the 10 minute pool. And first opponent playing bad username 96. Starting as usual, e4, we have a Scandinavian. Uh, queen takes d5 is a little bit more common, but knight f6, of course, is uh, an alternative move uh, preparing to take the pawn with the knight. So in this position, there are a few ways white can continue. Uh, knight c3 is typical, pawn d4 is typical, knight f3. Uh, I'm going to play a move here which is probably the most challenging move against this line, which is bishop to b5. Uh, just trying to make it so if black wants to block with the pawn, then I'll take and I'll be up a pawn. And when black blocks with the bishop, I can then move back. And I provoke the bishop to obstruct the queen from attacking the pawn. So uh, yeah, it's already a question how black wants to deal with this. Now we see yeah, black offering the trade. Uh, so I'm happy to take going up a pawn. Now black is getting a bit more development. Like black already has three minor pieces developed. I just have the bishop developed, but I think I'll be happy to continue here. Bishop g4 played very quickly, so pinning the knight. Uh, I'm very tempted to play knight e5 and say, oh no, my queen. If black takes it, it would be checkmate. Uh, the problem with this move is black can just take with a knight, and it's really, oh no, my knight, and then the bishop's defended and my bishop's attacked. So uh, this would just be hope chess. It's a, a bad move, hoping that black would go wrong. So yeah, I think from here, probably find just a castle, get the king safe. It would be nice if we see this move 95, because then, then I can take and say, oh no, my queen, and then checkmate, okay. Uh, that was a funny finish, or funny, funny finish and funny start to uh, episode. Um, episode's not finishing here, though. I'll definitely play at least another game. But uh, we see a very typical type of mating pattern from the opening, which I've had many times before in uh, similar types of positions. 95 is definitely a blunder here because, yeah, I'm threatening mate and also attacking the bishop and black doesn't have time to take the queen. So black probably should have played a move like pawn e5, just accelerate development, fight for space, prepare this, or maybe later knight d4. Uh, going back, I will say that I've played this position from the black side, and I think the, the two main moves here are either bishop to g4 to attack the queen and also unleash and attack the pawn. Uh, or the move b5, which is it's kind of interesting to attack the bishop and then go for a5. And uh, yeah, play can continue from here. So nice quick one to start the episode. Let's keep it going. Playing Ingri Mouse from Poland. And we see pawn g3, which I think has a few names. Chess.com is calling this a King's Fienkato opening. I'm going to play d5. I think this is also called the Hungarian, if I'm not mistaken. Pawn e3, okay. So this could also turn into a hippo if white goes for the double fianchetto with e3 and d3. Uh, I think I'll be happy to just control the center, playing pawn e5. Yeah, it does seem like white is going for a hippo. So we'll keep, uh, keep developing, knight to c6. I think I encountered the hippo at least once before in the speedrun series. And White's just focusing on moving all the pawns and not developing the minor pieces. So I mean, what do I want to do to like, try and disturb White's setup? I could just go for like nice central development, get the minor pieces into the center. But there are other ways to maybe play aggressively from early on. And I'm going to delay moving the knight because there might be cases where I'll want to push the f-pawn sooner. I'm going to start with the move bishop to e6. 
Uh, now this prepares queen to d7. And like later in the, the early middle game, if white employs the fian cattle and castles, then I have the queen bishop battery, which could be used to attack. I think bishop h3 sometimes will happen later. Uh, but white's just doing their own thing, pawn b3. Uh, I'll develop my bishop, bishop to d6. I'm holding back the knight because I might want to play knight to e7 um, rather than knight f6 just so I'm not blocking the f-pawn. Okay, we finally see the first minor piece developed for white uh, on move six. So I don't want to overthink things too much. Um, I'm going to play the move queen to d7. Good. Pretty sure my queen is, is going to be happy here going into the middle game. And yeah, I'm going to develop the knight to e7. Now I'm staying flexible which side I'll castle. I probably don't want to commit the king to either side. And there's an idea here which um, sometimes you'll see when when one player goes for this kingside fianchetto, uh, one of the ways to try and crack the setup is to go for the pawn break. And the two potential pawn breaks on the king side are either f5 and f4 or h5 and h4. And because my rook is still on h8, I think I'll be happy going for h5, just preparing h4. White very quickly responds with h3, which does have the benefit of if I play h4, then white can play g4 and maybe try and close things down. Uh, but I think I'll still go for this, because if white plays g4, then I'll play pawn f5. And I guess I should clarify too that when I say pawn break, it's really just referring to a move where I move a pawn to attack an opponent's pawn. And these sort of moves can be very useful like early on in the game to open the files or just open up more lines for the pieces. So here I'm very happy to open the h file for the rook, because now I have the rook, the bishop, and the queen all aimed against this pawn. Now the question is, can I get away with winning the pawn? Because if I take on h3, then and the bishop's supported, but my bishop is also pinned to the rook. So I'm really just trying to visualize. If I take on h3, does white have any way to attack the bishop on the next move. I don't think so. And then I'll be ready to castle, defend the rook with this rook, and then the bishop will no longer be pinned. So I think this is a, a free pawn. Hoping I'm not missing anything, but I don't think I am. Of course, if takes, I'm happy to trade. And it doesn't look like white's going to be casting kingside this game. Kingside's already crumbling a little bit. Yeah, there is uh, the move knight h5, which is actually kind of confusing because it would leave the bishop hanging, but then allow for knight takes g7, attacking the king, and discover attacking the rook. So, yeah, I'm not sure what I would have done against that move. I'll have to check after the game. Uh, queen e2 is very logical. White's preparing to castle queen side, also maybe threatening queen f1 to exert more pressure against this bishop. So here I'm in time to castle. Um, yeah, connecting the rooks. And now, now I'm ready to move the bishop back, either to e6, maybe to g4 as well, and offer the rook trade on h file, also maybe attack the queen. So pretty good start to the game. I mean, I tried to follow principles, developed, controlled the center. Uh, also, yeah, played aggressively on the king side, won the pawn. Uh, this is kind of a strange move, bishop f1. I guess the intent is to defend the bishop, but not necessarily trading off the bishop. And this gives me a choice. Like I could take on f1, I could drop back to g4. I think I'd rather not trade. Like even though I'm up a pawn, usually when you're up material, it's uh, a good idea to simplify. And this bishop 
I think just has more potential than this bishop. So let's keep it on the board. And now I am offering the rook trade, but also attacking the queen. I mean, this rook is defended by the knight. So I mean, if I take on each one, we'll probably see knight takes. Yeah, let's go for this. Knight is now forced to the corner. And now what to do with the bishop? I could stay in the center, draw back to e6, or I could stay aligned with the queen, draw back to h5. I think both moves are, are very fine. If I draw back to h5, the knight can redevelop and attack the bishop. So I'm going to stay in the center. And that way I keep the h file unobstructed because rook h8 might be coming. Uh, yeah, I'll play rook h8 pretty quickly. Only open file on the board. Attacking the knight. And now from here, there are some options. Uh, this move comes to mind, which attacks a knight, which is not defended. And honestly, this move looks pretty nice, even though it does allow the bishop to have scope against g7. It'll open up the center a bit more. And because my pieces are all like pretty centralized, if the center opens up and there's pawn trades, it should favor black in some way. Uh, now with f4, uh, this actually allows some tactic with bishop to g4. Queen supports the bishop, and the bishop skewers the queen and rook. So it looks like I'll be winning a bit of material. And assuming the queen moves, I'll take, and then I'll have a rook and pawn for a bishop. And earlier, like if, if white did throw in this move, I was going to say that, uh, yeah, even now if white throws in this move, then I have the move rook g8, counterattacking the bishop. Um, and white isn't really getting time to capture this back for free, because then I'll take the bishop and then I'll be up a whole rook. So, yeah, not the best timing on white's part to take the pawn. And of course, if the bishop saves itself, then I'll save my bishop. So white just resigns. Yeah, I was going to be up a full rook going forward. Um, but pretty smooth game. Uh, hopefully this demonstrates at least one way to play against such an opening for white. And this opening does have an ultra solid reputation. Uh, like if white can just complete development and castle, sometimes it can be a hard position to crack. But the setup that I employed with just developing, reinforcing the center pawns, and then going for this flank pawn push, I think is one of the most effective uh, approaches against a hippo. So hopefully some lessons to take away. Uh, we can move on to another game. Although actually before I move on, I do want to address this one moment. Oh, wow. Wow, so this was actually a mistake on my part. Yeah, I was saying earlier that if my opponent played knight h5, I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do. Knight h5 is actually a really, really good move for white. Like, even though it leaves a bishop undefended, like, somehow the tactics would have worked out. And I would have been in a lot of trouble. Because if I take the bishop, white can then take on f6, and we can see the eval bar. Or, sorry, not take on. Um, yeah, I'm reading the engine line, but white has knight f6, uh, which is even stronger forking the king and queen, forcing me to take back, and then after takes, I'm just losing a boatload of material. I have to block with a knight, and then takes, and then I guess there's bishop f8, but then there's rook takes g2, and white would be up a rook in this position. So yeah, I, I could have been in trouble. I mean, knight h5, it's a hard move to find at this rating level, but it's actually a nice kind of tactical puzzle to employ some obstruction, also to employ the discovery uh, once my bishop moves. Um, engine is saying the best move would have been for me to take, but then I'm still down material. The queen will take, and after takes, there's queen h8, again forcing the knight to move here. Um, it's a long tactical sequence, but uh, yeah, white's in full control here. 
up the exchange, has a battery. Uh, I can castle, of course. The game would still go on, but would not have been pleasant for Black. So, okay, definitely some lessons to take away from that game. Uh, let's move on. Keep it going. Let's see how this goes. From Canada, we have a Queen's Pawn opening. I'll play d d5. We have a London opening. So, yeah, the London and the Queen's Gambit are the two most common openings within um, Pawn d4. And against this, I'll develop naturally, starting with Knight f6. Against c4, I usually like to play e6, which is a Queen's Gambit declined. But against the London, usually what I like to do is actually play a reverse Queen's Gambit. And I don't think people can see this, but my opponent's already offering me a draw uh, after just a couple moves. But uh, yeah, we're going to play on. Decline the draw. Playing c5. Very quick check on b5. Let's keep developing. Now, I, am, uh, I was gambiting this pawn, but... Yeah, if white were to take it, there'd be ideas of queen a5 or e6 and bishop recapturing. Very often, black can win back the pawn without too much trouble. Uh, with knight c3, this is definitely not the most typical move in the London. Also, bishop b5 is not the most typical. Like Usually white goes for a setup with pawn c3, knight d2, and bishop comes to d3. So this resembles more of a Jobava London. And it's definitely playable. Um, and I have to figure out what to do here. I'm kind of out of my opening preparation. I'm kind of deciding whether to develop this bishop first, either to f5 or g4, and then play e6, or just play e6 immediately and try and be solid. I think generally, if you can, you should develop the bishop before committing to e6. And yeah, I think I'll go ahead and play bishop to g4 here. Now, I am perhaps provoking white to play f3, but then I don't mind moving back, and that, that would deprive f3 squared for the knight. Uh, but we see knight f3. So in this case, white is kind of walking into the pin. And now I'll play pawn e6. So I'm just trying to achieve a harmonious development with my minor pieces, controlling the center, with e6, I'm preparing to develop, also defending the pawn on c5. And I would say the game is fairly balanced here. Like, uh, yeah, taking is, is playable, but it gives me the bishop pair. Take back. And we see pawn h3. So, yeah, against this move, I mean, I've had like very similar positions in the past where, like, it's a question do I want to? take the pinned knight? Do I want to retreat and maintain the pin? Uh, in this case, I think taking would be a small mistake, because then white can happily activate the queen. So I'll maintain the pin. And if white wants to kick the bishop, I don't mind this, because now with the pawns extended, uh, it's less likely white will castle. And if white does castle kingside, then the king will be a bit more exposed. Uh, but this is a, a more kind of energetic way for white to play because yeah, white's grabbing space on the king side, attacking my undefended pawn, attacking the bishop. So probably want to look to defend the pawn here. Um, something like queen b6 looks like an option. And rook c8 also. I guess I have to ask myself if queen b6... There is this move knight a4, but then I have some checks. Should be okay. Let's play queen b6. Multi-purpose move, defending, ex exerting pressure on d4, also attacking the b2 pawn. And yeah, very often in this sort of reverse queen's gambit setup, the queen does find its way to b6. And I was going to say earlier that sometimes against the London opening, uh, the b2 pawn is one of the main targets for white um, that black can try and attack early on. So we do see knight a4. Now if I play this or this, I'm not actually winning any material because white has to move c3 to block the check and defend the knight with the queen. 
And the knight also defends b2. So I think it makes more sense to play queen a5, because if I play queen b4, c3, then my queen would have to move again. With queen a5, I'm ensuring that c3 won't attack the queen. And white's going to have to play c3 or knight c3 to save the knight. I guess if white plays c3, then I have to address the fact that this pawn is still attacked. Or even with this, I have to address the fact that the pawn's attacked. I don't want to move back and repeat the position. So I think I'm best off playing rook to c8 here, just giving the rook a job in the position. The queen is nicely placed, pinning the knight. And perhaps next move I can look to play something like knight e4 and attack the pinned knight. Oh, white castle is kingside. That's interesting. So white's uh, immediately relieving the pin. So this move has less venom to it. And even though white's extended on the king side, it's kind of hard to attack. Like there's a move h5 um, going back to the concept of pawn breaks to try and open up the h file. But h5 would walk into this move, and then yeah, my structure would get really ugly on the king side. So I don't think I want to do that right away. The move like bishop d6 I don't think works, because after it takes, my bishop's not defended, my rook would be attacked as well. So question what to do. Could play bishop e7. I could take on d4. Probably want to move a bit more quickly here. Um, I think bishop, bishop e7 looks fine. I'm not sure if I actually want to castle, but um, it's just a basic improving move kind of putting the ball back in white's court. At some point, maybe I want to take on d4 and then perhaps play c5 again. There's definitely some benefit to having the double c pawns. Like double pawns don't have the best reputation in chess. Like generally they are considered weak because they can't defend each other. But when the pawns are closer to the center, then um, sometimes there, there is some benefit h4 just going straight for the trapping of my bishop this is actually a very typical idea in jobava london which maybe i should have been a bit more aware of because if i allow this bishop e4 f3 traps the bishop i might have to play h5 or h6 here which is not what i want to play but honestly like I don't see any other way to save my bishop. H4 is a great move. If I take... I have to watch my time, too. I'm going to play H5. Like I'm getting in some time trouble. I'm also like in trouble in the position, too. So... Have to um, have to just stay really focused here. And White's playing a, a nice game so far. I'm allowing this and then this. I mean, this structure, even though it looks ugly, like speaking of double pawns, uh, these are not going to be the best double pawns. E6 could be a weakness if the F pawn moves away. But uh, it's not the end of the world. Now, if I end up with those pawns and let's say white will play g5, then I'll, I'll hopefully be able to cope. Like I can play knight to d7. And one plan might be to castle and put the king on h7. And then because the structure is so closed, and there's really no, no pawn break for white, um, although white is going for pawn break with e4 here. Um, but there's no way for white to easily like open up the structure on the king side. So I think I will be happy to castle here. Getting the king to a safe place, also using the f file, which has just been opened. 
Um, of course, there were other moves I could have considered there, like taking Ymir Pawn. But I'm leaving the tension, attacking the undefended bishop. And e4 is definitely, I mean, it's attempting to just blow up in the center. Very confrontational move. Uh, the drawback with this move is that this pawn is less supported. And I mean, I think it's very likely I'll take next move. And then if the queen has to take back, then I can look for ways to attack the queen, something like e5 or c5 or bishop c5. It will depend what white does here, though. Bishop d2. Very tricky move. So if I take on d4, white can then take on d5, unleashing the bishop to attack my queen. Okay, let's be careful. I think I'll move back to c7. Um, safety first. Did not want to walk into any discoveries there. see the trade. So if I take here, there's takes here. Probably better off taking... So I'm undoubling the c-pawns. Queen e2. Attacking that. So if I take and then take and then king h7, d5 could hang. I, I have to defend. A queen b... No, queen b6 and knight a4. And then queen c6. Let's try this. Definitely feeling the pressure here. I mean, White's found some nice counter-attacking moves. And down to two and a half minutes. Knight takes d5, which I actually overlooked. This this does win material. But I have rook f7. Maybe I'll win back material. Yeah, the queen's attacked. I defend the knight through x-ray vision, and I still have this battery. Is white going to take on c5 with the counterattack? Maybe I can take with knight. Things are definitely getting spicy. Yeah, let's take on d4. I still have this idea, like tucking the king away. Okay, we see b3. I could take on, can I take on c2? Allowing queen e8 and then knight f8. I really have to watch my time. I'm gonna play this move first. Wasn't sure if I, if taking on c2 is the safest, allowing the queen to come in. Okay, so white defends. I'm playing this move to try and set up knight e5 and then eventually knight f3. Um, and with time low, I'm, I'm uh, trying to rely more on intuition now. With f4, this does give the e4 square, like especially because the pawn can't move backwards. So there's some idea to get the knight in, although I'd have to watch out for bishop b4. Yeah, I probably don't want to allow bishop b4. I stop it. Or maybe I do allow it. With bishop b4, I can take on f4. Looks like the bishop is tied down. The knight should be making its way to e4. Um, so yeah, white abandoned the f-pawn. There is this really scary pin. But it's also scary for white, because rook g4 is a threat. The king is getting a little bit more exposed. And the question, can white like somehow exploit the knight without leaving the king neglected? Rook g4. Rook g4 is hard to stop. 
queen h2. Yeah, let's go ahead and check. I mean, I could take... I don't really want to trade queens, though. I'm going to play this move. This is threatening maiden two. I'm keeping the knight defended. But if, okay, of course, if takes, I, I checkmate in a couple moves. Yeah, trading queens, it would have simplified. White's defending. Move in like this. Completely abandoning the knight. Falling below a minute here this is by far the toughest game of the speed run so far. Rook here. Maybe we trade. Actually, Rook there, I have this move. This is a really nice move. Does it work though? I think it's okay. Takes, I take back and then fork. Now I'm threatening this. Okay. Stayed alive there. Had to had to really stay focused. I mean, White was very resourceful this game. They're probably uh, very much underrated in this account. Yeah, in an end game like this, um, like thirty something seconds, it's plenty of time. Just promote a pawn, and then go for the ladder mate. Man, what a game. Um, I feel like I was probably in trouble somewhere that game. Um, I mean, my opponent offered me a draw after after my second move, after their third move. So it's I think it's good that we fought. We we had a much more entertaining battle than uh, taking a draw after just a few moves. Um, maybe some of the top grandmasters in the world can can learn from declining draws early on. But uh, yeah, let's just go through here. Um, I mean, White played kind of a non-conventional opening, putting the pieces on um, maybe not the most traditional squares, but was able to get away with it. And then, yeah, this combination of h3 g4 knight e5 and then later h4 h5 actually caused me some big problems and here yeah I, I basically had to move my h pawn at some point i could have thrown in takes i started with this allowing the trade and white is slightly for choice here but and it's a very imbalanced position Actually, a very rich position. Now, e4 was yeah probably not the best move, but it made the position uh, very complicated. And yeah, bishop d2. Engine really doesn't like. I was scared when I saw this move though, um, so I had to be super careful with the queen. Takes takes queen e2. But actually, everything was under control. I was able to solidify, and this was actually a nice uh, construction. I do want to give a shout out to Anish Giri. I remember watching one of his older lectures. I don't know if it's on YouTube or maybe another platform, but he was talking about how in like a similar but different sort of opening, and sometimes the structure is actually like really beneficial, even with having the double G pawns, it creates a really nice uh, safe space for the king and we definitely saw that in this game with white's king being a lot more exposed and yeah it looks like um like white fought really well put up resistance this knight e4 move was a nice touch to save the knight and essentially lead to the simplification so a uh, good game to my opponent um i think that will do it for this episode uh thanks everyone for watching if you have questions leave them below I had a nice mix of games today and do stay tuned for more if you like the content subscribe 
and I'll see you guys soon.